I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Jason Thompson. He is CEO at Partior. Jason, it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here in New York and you know, on a bright spring day. So we're all happy to be here. <laughs> and I'm happy that you're here and I'm looking forward to talking with you. But before we do that, just a quick note to our viewers. This interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSC doesn't recommend any investments or investment strategies. All right, so Jason, tell me about Partior. What is the work that you and your team are doing? Yeah, so Patio is a company that actually is dated about four years ago and comes from a project called Ubin, which started in 2016 and was really about the way of the future money movement between financial institutes and how liquidity operates between central banks and banks. So we're steeped in history and where we came from. Established in 2021 by JP Morgan, DBS, the ASEAN leading bank, and also Tomasic, the state-owned fund of Singapore. And so we established really to solve some of the issues around money, moving money. Um, today we're live with US dollar, Sing, uh, Sing dollar, sterling, and a multitude of currencies and also expanding into emerging markets. So, you know, what do we do today? We're really solving for multi-currency cross-border clearing and settlement. We do it instantaneously, or as we call it, atomically. And that means there's a lot of efficiencies that are built into it. Now, the size of this problem is quite huge. Corporate money movement globally is around 23.5 trillion per annum. And also the cost for that is, is very high at the moment at about 120 billion, according to an Oliver Wyman recent report. So we think there's about 80% inefficiency. So our aim is to not only take out the inefficiency of cost, but as the market's becoming more difficult on liquidity, to be able to reuse that liquidity faster and enable markets. So it's exciting times for us. Um, we're a future thinking company, but we're already live and operating. Okay, so can you explain why it's important to evolve the global financial infrastructure? Well, we've just covered the inefficiency, right? There is inefficiency, but what does that feel like when you're a corporate and you're moving money is one aspect. We're also seeing the, the way that the actual systems, the ecosystems are developing is demanding faster money movement. So for example, we have around 16.5 trillion in 2030 of tokenized assets. So there's an expectation that that can be cleared atomically in the moment. If you can't, then how can that tokenization happen? How can the fractionalization of assets happen that's driving financial inclusion? So there's a number of factors that are driving this, not least in efficiency. But I think if we look at overall what's happening in the global market, there's an inflection point at the moment. You know, we're seeing that there is an issue around the demands on the financial institutes and their services. We're seeing inflation rise. We're also seeing areas like ASEAN become more important, for instance. Out of that 23.5 trillion, 11.1 trillion is ASEAN money movement. So how do we incorporate, how, how do we drive that? So we're seeing there's a lot of changes that are happening in the world and existed fragmented systems, old systems are not just inefficient, they're prohibitive for business. So it's really important we drive change. And I think certainly the partners that we work with are very change orientated and they're looking for somebody like us to, to drive that change with them. All right, and finally, Jason, tell me, how do you expect global liquidity to evolve in the foreseeable future? Well, I always think that technology and these changes, they're often slower than we anticipate, if I'm honest, Judy, and I, I think we've got many examples of that. So it's important we solve the problem today, but also looking forward, if we, we see that there's around about 90% of central banks working on different CBDC, central bank digital currency initiatives, they're working in different stages of evaluating them, but we should expect that we're gonna see commercial bank tokenized deposits and central bank money operating you know, mainstream in three to five years as tokenized deposits. So that's gonna change the way we look at liquidity and the way we think about it clearing. The ability to switch between those different deposits is also gonna be important. So I think there's a, there's a huge change ahead of us and the capability of financial institutes to keep up with that change. But we also have to recognize that this is a highly governed environment. So the way we think about the, the, the governance, the security and data, et cetera, is really important. Now, at the moment, I think blockchain technology and also distributed ledger technology in a private and permissioned environment serving just financial institutes gives us a huge opportunity to drive change management, but still have confidence of policymakers and central banks. So I think there's a, there's a huge change ahead of us in terms of liquidity, but there's also an opportunity to accelerate that change. All right, well, Jason, wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you.